It's all about humanity. Hello, model citizens. Welcome to Humanity Junction. Tonight, we're going to do a little testing and see what grade I can get. I am uh, in the process of designing a new layout, and one of the things I can't figure out is what the maximum grade should be. And a lot of people say, well, just test it. And uh, some people have been nice enough to uh, do their own videos of it, but I kind of got to the point where I thought maybe I should just just do it myself and why not do it live in front of everybody because it's not as if I've been having a multitude of technical issues already tonight. I've had camera issues, I've had lighting issues, all kinds of issues, so I figured let's take it live and do some more complicated things. I do have a poll going. Uh, so far, it doesn't look like the two percenters are winning, uh, but we got uh, the poll is what grade will I achieve during the test? Uh, eight 40 foot boxcars on an incline being pulled by a switcher. 38% uh, says 2%. 24% uh, say 3%, which I think is interesting because I am, I am kind of curious as to, um, as to how, you know, how, how, what, what we'll be able to do. So here is the testing scenario um, that I've got going and, and kind of what's going on. Um, if, you, if you haven't been around, <laughs> I've kind of been working on this, uh, this new design. And one of the last things that I've been kind of trying to figure out is what the bench work is going to look like. And to determine what the bench work is going to look like, I kind of need to figure out my maximum grade. Currently, uh, currently, I have a max of about a 1% grade, but I might want a little more separation in places, which, so we'll see. So Dennis is asking a lot of questions, but it sounds like he already uh, answered or answered some of them uh, for himself. 
but I do currently have on my desk um, three locomotives that I can work up to. Uh, the plan is uh, they're all uh, they're all Atlas Alco S2 locomotives, four axle switchers. I'm going to start with one. I'm going to see how far I can get with uh, one locomotive. Then we can add a second one and see what we can pull with the second one and uh, kind of work up from there. I've got 15 boxcars that have been weighed out at 1.1 ounces each. So I know basically what I'm getting into uh, with that. And uh, we're not, we're not going to do the testing here, though. Um, we're, we're definitely not doing the testing here. Uh, I got, I, I've got a little setup behind me. Um, here is a uh, little incline tester thing. So right now it's at 0.1. I don't know if you can, you can kind of see it in the camera. Do we see it? Wait, did I see a train go by? You did. I, I've got trains uh, on the desk. Uh, trains are on the desk. I got nothing running behind me though, but we are going to get to that. Um, yeah, what I, what I think I'm gonna run on the layout in general would be uh, two four axle locomotives. Uh, could be something like a GP30, uh, but more likely it's going to be a smaller switcher. So I thought that I would kind of start with these switchers and go from, uh, go from there for now. I'm going to use my TCS UWT 50 because that's just what's currently hooked up. Uh, for ease and simplification, all of the locomotives are set to address 301. Just means I can kind of add the locomotives at will, not really worry about what I am, uh, what I'm doing and how it's going to go. Uh, the problem with using bullfrog snot with any of this sort of stuff with a four axle switcher is you've already got very limited pickups because of the four axles. So I, you know, I, I don't know that I really want to start putting stuff on uh, the wheels. Yeah. <laughs> Same on the real trains. Uphill is bad. Downhill is worse. E exactly. That's it as well. Uh, we don't necessarily want to have uh, any runaway trains, whether they're going up or down. Can people see uh, what's going on here? Let me, I'll grab, let me stop these trains running around on my desk here. Uh, let me grab one of them and let's put it on here. And let me know if you guys can see this okay. Um, we'll see how, how well you can, you can see it. But, you know, one locomotive, basically flat. Uh, I mean, of course we all knew this would run, or at least, at least we all hoped, <laughs> we all hoped this would run, right? You're not recommending it, you just wanted to say, I get you, I get you. Yeah, exactly. I did, I did clean the track uh, before this, so hopefully that's going to uh, help things out. But um, I can also, I don't know, we can also do this, which kind of gives a little bit of a closer shot. You can probably, probably see things a little better. Maybe we'll just, that's probably better. We, we don't really need to, don't really need the full run. So the next thing to do is I got to figure out how to elevate this to 2%. And uh, unfortunately, the best way I have to do this is to kind of step in front of the camera. So I will be continually, very likely, stepping in front of uh, and blocking the camera. Uh, but if you put snot on the wheel, want to get power from the flange of the wheel. Maybe, 
maybe. Um, it it kind of rides, it only really hits the flange when you're going around corners. So um, uh, Dennis has hiccups. Uh, Dennis, my recommendation would be to look in the mirror. That would be my suggestion. So let's, let's see um, what happens if I put another one, two, three block under it. Uh, it takes us up to 0.8%. So let's slide this a little bit closer. I know I'm blocking the camera. I know. I'm trying to get it up to about 1%, but it does not seem to want to cooperate right now. There we go. 0.9. We're getting closer. Point, we're back to 0.8. Uh, basically, this is a piece of wood. I went down to the uh, hardware store and just grabbed some, uh, found this eight foot piece of wood and figured that that would, uh, that would probably work. I've got some popsicle sticks now. I'm raising it up, seeing, seeing if we can't get close enough, 1%. Let's now see. I'm assuming the locomotive will uh, do this as well, obviously. Oh, and I'm glad I looked at it because I had it running in reverse. So let's see. Yep, my popsicle stick shims. So one locomotive trucking along, going up the grade. Let's see, one locomotive. So I've got this, uh, I'm gonna start making a list here because I figure that's the best way to do this. Um, so I'll start making this list that I'll keep. So one locomotive, we'll, we'll see what the, the max grade is when we get up to it. And we'll, uh, we'll go from there, so let's, uh, Let's go back to what this. All right, so that's working. Nice slow speed. Uh, th well, this is 50 on the throttle, Lynn. Lynn's asking what speed I have at. Um, this is 50 on the throttle, but it's, uh, who, who knows? I don't know what it is. I've got it set up at like, the speed curves at like 50%. And then the throttles at like 50%. So we'll, we'll see from there. So I'm going to take this out and I've got another block here. So let's go up a little bit higher. Now 1.9%. The train's still going down. Okay. There we go. 2%. So the train is going down. Let's see if we can get it to go back up. There are some that are on a radius. And yes, I do know that pulling around a radius that I do need to uh, somewhat be concerned with that as well. But for this testing, I'm gonna kind of get, figure out what a max is. And then I will, uh, Obviously not use, or the goal is to not use, um, use the max. Yeah, uh, David, I am trying really hard. I don't have a stop at the, uh, the left side of the track, the upper side. I do have a stop at the lower side. So I am hopefully gonna keep an eye on it and have it uh, not run off the end of the track. I am kind of realizing though that uh, with how low my, with how low the shelf is, this shelf here, I don't know how, how far I'm actually gonna be able to go up before it kind of, um, so I, I may have a testing uh, maximum uh, limit as well. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think I wanna dump, uh, I don't think I wanna dump the locomotive off the, uh, off the end. I don't think I've seen any, uh, I don't think I've seen any wheel slip yet, but 
we'll see. Let's just go, let's see if we can go right up to about 3% here. Got another one, two, three block. So that's 2.8. The locomotive did not slip down uh, as I did this though. So I guess that's a good sign. 2.9. Three, there we go, there's 3%. So let's see. Locomotive's heading back in the other direction now. Correct, Dwight, I'm not pulling anything. I, I need to see kind of what both ends of the limits are. I need to know, before I check whether this locomotive can pull 10 boxcars on a 3% incline, I needed to see if the locomotive itself could even uh, pull up a 3% incline. So it does look like the locomotive's happy at 3%. I guess, you know, we might as well, we might as well take it up a little bit further with just the locomotive, uh, just to, uh, just to see an 18 inch radius curve will add about another percent on a 1% grade. Dennis, is that, uh, where, where did you get that number? I'm just, I'm just curious. Curious where that came from. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to stick to like 1% grades, but I'm just kind of trying to, uh, I'm, just, I'm just trying to see what my limits are and go from there. Oh, that would be interesting. Um, I do have, I don't know where it is. I do have one of those AccuTrack things, but you know, uh, railroad boy grade calculator. Oh, there you go. That's pretty cool. So we know the locomotive itself can do 3%. Let's see if the locomotive itself can do more than 3% just to, just to have the information because the information's good. So 3.9, you know, I wonder if I just, move this down a little bit further too far oh there we go 4.0 it says locomotive's still moving nice and slow now let's see if it'll go back up yeah so my goal if i can i'm thinking is somewhere between 1 and 1 1.5 but you know i, I don't really know don't really. I'm, I'm actually surprised. I didn't think that, I, I didn't think that this one locomotive would actually even be able to get itself up this 4% grade. So I guess, I guess that's, uh, that's a good thing. So let's say one locomotive, let's say it, uh, 4%. So now we should do one plus one, I guess, right? One locomotive and one, uh, one box car. See where we go from there. This could take a while. Uh, what's only 1.5? Uh-oh. That's a problem. This, this uh, camera that I had there got in the way. Um, all right, so let's take it back down. We'll do, uh, we'll do a box car and go from there. When you start writing down data, it's science. Otherwise, you're just goofing around. Yeah, so I'm doing science, right? Right, this is... Um, shouldn't have any problem with eight cars. Should I just throw on like four cars and kind of and kind of go from there and say, okay, like, or should I... How many should I do at a time, I guess, is my, uh, is my million dollar question. How scientific should I be about this? I am going to, I need to get stuff out of my way. Um, so let's take this back down. Got to get back down to a 1% grade. So that's about 1%, close enough. 
Uh, starting with eight cars on a grid is a question. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one at a time, is it loaded or empty? I'm using box cars that are weighed at 1.1 ounces, uh, 40 foot box cars at 1.1 ounces, which is actually slightly over uh, NMRA standards. So put all eight on unless you're wanting this to feel like an epic Heath unboxing. I don't want to, I don't want to feel like an epic Heath unboxing, but I do want to, I do want to make sure that, you know, I'm getting some, um, I don't know if realistic is the right word, but I want to make sure I'm getting some good, uh, good test results. So how many of you thought I was going to um, try and align all of these by hand while everyone was watching? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's do five. Let's start with five. Let's see. Let's see how high of a uh, how high how steep of a grade I can get with um, five. We're gonna do the same. Uh, speed we were doing before, which is uh, 50 on the throttle, which I don't know what that exactly, um, what that exactly is. Uh, it, it's 0 point, uh, 0 0.1 is what it says right now. It's slightly, uh, slightly on a little bit of an angle. So the good news is it can pull uh, it can pull the cars on a flat surface. I guess we kind of I guess we kind of already uh, we already knew that right or at least I think we already knew that. The real thing that I'm wondering is whether I'm going to be able to do this and not dump all the box cars off this piece of wood as I uh, start lifting things up. I think that is. That's really going to be the real challenge uh, in all of this is not dumping all the boxcars. The good news is that if I do dump the boxcars, I will likely be standing in front of the camera at the time. Uh, so you won't actually be able to see me dump all of the boxcars. I'll, uh, I'll be doing it all on my own without anybody's uh, eyes on it, without anybody making fun of me. So this is, uh, this is just under 1%, 0.8%. Uh, and it's a uh, locomotive and five boxcars. I did spend some time before the stream uh, running the boxcars around and uh, just letting the motors warm up and just making sure everything was broken in and nice and flowing and running well. Um, but yep, so that seems to be working pretty well. I don't see any, any changes. Oh, that's interesting. There, there's probably some, this car is not rolling very well. Huh, that's interesting. Okay. So let's uh let's go up another another percent. So this should take me to about 1.8 if I'm not mistaken. 1.9. Let's let's get it up to 2 just because nice round numbers are nice and round. And let's go back in the other direction. And see what we got. Add five more. Well, I want to, with my thought is, is that I will test up to either 4% or where it, or when it fails uh, with each setup. And then I will add more. Um, I, I think that just, I think that makes, uh, I think that makes the most sense, maybe. So this is one loco and five box cars, so we're already up to two percent. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of curious how this experiment's going to work as uh, work as well. But you know, this thing is uh, it's trucking along pretty good, although it just stopped. Why did it stop? Did it hit something?
Well, that's not good news. It is, it's wheel slipping. Hmm. I surely thought I was going to get farther than, uh, than 2%. Uh, a lot of wheel slip here. I wonder, uh, this is kind of failing sooner than I expected, which makes me kind of wonder. Let's see if I go out here a little further, that's 1.8. That's 2.0, 1.9-ish. So it's not a perfect test with the, uh, but I really thought it was gonna go, uh, I thought it was gonna go much higher than that. No, nothing's perfectly straight in this world. It took me a long time. Uh, yesterday I was running around after work trying to find something that was eight foot long to do this on. I'd hoped to get a metal shelf standard, but um, I didn't. So uh, it could be a dip in the track. Uh, it definitely keeps stopping at exactly the same point. So I think I think for the sake of this argument, I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say one loco and five box cars only gets me to two percent because I don't think uh, move your track percent gauge and what did you clean your track with? I clean my track with uh, this stuff right here, uh, track and rail cleaner ATC six zero zero six. And then after I used this to clean the track, I then went back and I wiped it down as best as I could to get as much as I could off the track um, as well. So just trying to make sure it was clean, but with nothing else on it. Uh, does anyone else think it looks steeper than what's being read? Uh, it's because of the angle of the camera. I guess I should stop just running it, uh, running it back and forth and see. Uh, does that track and rail cleaner work pretty well? It works okay. You know, this is, you gotta remember it's, it's N scale. So, um, you know, <laughs> It's got that problem going on. I was kind of hoping I would get more cars out of uh, out of one loco, but I, I think I'm just gonna throw a second locomotive on and see where we get. It does stop at exactly the same point every time, which makes me wonder a little bit. Let's actually use, let's actually use this. Um, after I, uh, after I wiped it off and everything, I used, uh, the track cleaner from Scott's, uh, Scotty's model shop, which is Scott Thornton's, um, model railroad shop. And this is a little holder for little microfiber, uh, cleaning rags that, that I've, uh, I've found works pretty darn well actually and you you just use them dry and so the other thing is this track doesn't line up perfectly as well which i don't know why it doesn't but it doesn't seem to so oh that is a good point that's an interesting point the track is fed at the at the other end. Now it didn't make any further. I, although I will say that if I turn up the speed, so right now um, the speed's turned all the way up. So here, let's we can back up a little bit. 
Um, so the speed's turned all the way up. And when it gets to a certain point, it does start wheel slipping. So right there, it is actually wheel slipping at that point. So it does kind of, I mean, try putting a block at the end. What are you talking about? Uh, it takes a lot to stall it. Yeah, well, that is O scale after all. Let's, uh, let's go back down and I guess and just sort of start with, well, let's do this first. Let's take off one of the box cars and let's see. So now I've got four box cars. Cause that, that might work a little bit better. I'm kind of bummed. I thought, I thought this was going to go much higher than that, but let's see. Uh, that's a good point as well. I do have an NMRA track gauge uh, right here. Of course, if I touch it to the track right now, I would just short it out. So we're, I mean, here's four and it works. Uh, it seems to be working really well now. So maybe 2% is, uh, is, I mean, mind you, this is a small switcher. We, we could try with, uh, I, I could put like an SD70 Ace up there and I'm guessing that, um, I, I'm guessing that that would have no issues at this point, but Roy Container Man gifted 10 Humanity Junction memberships. If you're not a member, jump in there and grab one of those. Uh, let's see if I can see who grabbed one. We got uh, Siegfried Leopold, Ron Moen, John Train BFGR, SD Pandy Project, Steve87, PSAP, Glenn G, Aaron S, Mom and Son Train Rail Fans, and Shane Trains were all gifted memberships. Thank you so much, Roy, for that. So I'm going to... I think for the point of this test, I am going to just add a second locomotive, a second switcher. I'll get up to 10 cars with the two switchers, I'm guessing, maybe, hopefully. Is that true, Roy? Usually you have to click on something to accept them. I thought. Maybe you don't have to grab them. I thought you had to like say, yes, I'm willing to accept a membership but what do I know? Uh, I'm just going to add another locomotive. And let's just do that because it's likely this is how I'm going to be running them anyway. So um, that's a possibility as well, adding weight to the locomotives. And that's, I mean, I guess ultimately that's what adding the second locomotive is kind of doing. I mean, it, it's adding more wheels um, as well. We've got a gift going on. We got uh, another gift. Mr. Dave Hammer gifted five memberships. Oh, it's assigned randomly and then you accept. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so two locomotives will more than double. Hmm. Uh, try another locomotive and see if it stalls in the same spot. I could do that too. Should I do that first? So both of these right now are um, the same number. So I can theoretically just pull, if I just pull this guy out of the middle here. Oh, connect that up. So are we now curious if I put, I don't remember which box car was back on there. If I put this box car on here, 
so this is the this is essentially the same locomotive, but it's a different locomotive. So are we thinking that it may or may not be able to? Uh, you did nothing to accept the membership. Well, there we go. Hey, got, Robert told me to come bother me. I appreciate that. All right, so here we go. We're going back up the hill. Uh, all the boxcars have metal wheels. All the boxcars are weighted to 1.1 ounces. These are the boxcars that I uh, swapped all the trucks, the couplers, uh, did all the weight stuff on them for the time saver. So I know that they're all uh, consistent. 1.1 is slightly overweight for a 40 foot boxcar for NMRA standards, but uh, only slightly. And it looks like this locomotive is making it a little further. So it does seem to be locomotive dependent, uh, but we're back to five. Uh, we're back to five box cars and a single switcher, and it is just creeping along. That is true, Mike. And that is actually what I love about model railroading. I actually like this sort of like uh, trial and error type stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I think it is still slipping a little bit. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but it, it made it better than, uh, made it better than the other one. So I'm going to add back, oh, well, the, the thing stopped, but I'm going to add back in this other locomotive in a second. So we'll add this back for a little extra pulling power. And I'll add some more boxcars. So we got five there. Let's grab... Just trying to grab ones that I'm not going to knock everything over. Five. So should we go up to eight, I guess? Five, six, seven, oh, come on. There we go. Seven, and here's going to be number eight. You probably can't see it. All right, so there's eight uh, with two locomotives. Uh, a just under 2% grade. And we'll see if uh, we'll see if this slips at 2% uh, or not or how that's going. I uh, used to run at least three six axle locomotives on my 2% grade with an average of 50 cars. Yeah, once I, once I get through this with these two switchers, I think what I'll do is I'll throw, I'll throw one of my Kato SD70 Aces on and I bet you that thing is gonna, uh, I, I bet you that it'll just pull um, all by itself probably. Whatever this, whatever this uh, stops at. I don't think I'm going to do a shove test. Uh, I don't think there's nowhere on my layout really that I would, uh, I would have to do that. And yes, a, a running start would absolutely, absolutely um, make a difference. But, uh, you know, to some extent I'm trying to make it, uh, I'm trying to make it harder, I guess, uh, all of my, the plan for the layout is all the staging and all the switching areas will be completely flat. So the only places that will have a grade is uh, between the industrial areas. So theoretically, theoretically you could just uh, get a good, just get a good uh, run up to it. Gotta be the track, it's, it could be, this is gonna be. Um, yeah, I, you know, I would love to run my layout on a completely level, uh, setup. Unfortunately, uh, there are some limitations that I have that, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, let's just put the 10th one on. We'll see what happens. So, oh, wait, I said eight. 
I just realized that was actually the number that I planned to, uh, that's the, that's the number is eight. I, I was like totally spaced out. Um, but let's see if this pulls 10. It's pulling it, but it's slow. I can't tell. Yeah, there's definitely some wheel slip going on. Definitely some wheel slip and it just stopped. So it'll get up to eight with two locomotives at 2%. But 10, it, it, it fails. So why don't we pull out? Uh, no, eight, eight, uh, eight 40 foot cars is, if I said 10, I, that was a mistake. But yeah, exactly. Uh, o scale, 2.5%. Uh, grades add drama. They sure do. That is for sure. 100%. Um, well, it, it 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 didn't quite do, it didn't quite do two uh, percent. Why don't we? You know, so uh, let me. I'm I'm backing this up into the bumper. I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna take these two. I'm gonna take these two S twos off, and I'm gonna put a GP thirty on. Wow, that's actually pretty heavy. When I just let go of that, that uh, that was heavier than I thought. Let's see. Here's a. This is an Atlas GP30. Uh, so another four axle, but bigger than the bigger than the S2s. All right. So what do we got? Twenty two forty six, two two four six. There we go. It's not moving at all. Yeah, it cannot do it. So that locomotive can't do it, but I'm going to bet. Well, I don't know that I'm going to bet, but I'm going to grab this SD70 Ace right here. I mean, it's good to know, I guess, that I can go up to 2%, but it, it, is, a, it is good as well that, to know that I, I can't go over 2%. Okay. So this is 1943, enter. Interesting, this won't pull it either. This can't pull, this can't pull the 10 cars either. I was hoping. Well, let's go back to eight then and see, see if this SD70 Ace can do eight. Is it caught on something? So if I add my finger to it to add some weight, it, it easily pulls it on its own. But by itself, by itself, it, it's not pulling the, uh, it's not able to pull them. I'm actually kind of surprised by that. <laughs> add another one? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Let's find out. No, nothing, nothing's derailed. It's, it's moving smoothly. Hmm. 
Locomotive's running smoothly. So it does appear that I don't want to get anywhere near, I don't want to get anywhere near 2% unless I have to, because that means I have to start running, I have to start running uh, a lot more power. No, I will not be using a Bright Boy on the track. Absolutely not. Let's let's grab a second one. Uh, if you don't know the Bright Boy story, go uh, just look up um, track cleaning. Um, Ron Marsh has a good video on it. I have a good video on it. Well, I don't know. My video is not as good. Ron Marsh has a good video on it. Uh, what is it? Fish Plate Films was one of the first uh, to come out with it. Um, but yeah, uh, watch those videos on why you should never use a Bright Boy uh, on your track. Oh, so let's go 301. So the good news is, I guess, that the two, if I do double head with the S2s, the, um, you know, eight is doing, eight's doing pretty well, uh, pulling eight. Is that eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that is eight. Let's try nine, just because we kind of skipped over nine and went right to 10. So let's try nine. Oh, wrong way. Let's see if nine will, uh, if nine will work or not. Leftover from the brass track days, the, the uh, Bright Boy, yeah. Um, yeah, I put, uh, I put track cleaner on it and then I uh, wiped it off. So, yeah, can you accomplish the layout? I can, 1% uh, will work. I, I can do the layout at 1%. What I am quote unquote concerned about, yeah, it's stopping at about the same spot each time, which is kind of interesting, which does make you wonder a little bit. If I get a, let's try getting a running start and using a little more speed because I, I am using a, uh, I, I, you know, this is the speed that I'm running at, at uh, to get up there is this, uh, this slower speed. Um, I do have metal wheels. I've got uh, Intermountain metal wheels on everything. So, yeah, send me a message and I'll send you a photo of what your track looks like after a bright boy from a microscopic view. Yeah, it's not good. It's not, it's not good. Okay, so let's, so I'm gonna guess if I gun it, and this is actually, oh, look at that. It almost stopped. It might be stopping. Yeah, very interesting. So that's, uh, so that's nine cars. So with these smaller switchers, uh, eight cars really is the limit if I hit 2%. Oh, so what I was saying is I don't intend to go up to uh, 2%, but the, yeah, <laughs> full send, exactly. Um, try it without the shim. It's your track gauge. It, it could be the track gauge. This is uh, Kato Unitrack, so even if it was out of gauge, there's not a whole lot I can do about it being out of gauge because it's Kato Unitrack. And just because I've got three of them and just because I can. Um, so this should pull, this should pull fine. Uh, take it down to one and a half. I could do that. Yeah, let me do that. My single Shea will pull 2% with how many cars, Grandpa Rails? How many cars? Um, I do like to double head them. Yeah, double head, double heading is kind of fun. Yeah, the, the problem could be me. 
It could be. That is true. Um, pull yeet ahead. Yeah. Is that piece of timber flat? It is slightly bowed. Uh, it's not as, um, uh, it's not as flat as it could be. Um, but yeah, let's, why don't we do that? Go back, go down to one and a half, like some people are suggesting and see what we can get up to with, uh, with one and a half just for, uh, just for the fun of it. The more locos, the more fun. That is true. That is definitely true. Oop, I need to take it down further. Get it down past, past my little incl inclinometer, incl inclinometer, however you say it. You should better take off and yeah, Back to the Future. It does work better if you're pushing a DeLorean. Um, I could try swapping it out. Do I have? I do have another piece of track. I've got it all taped down because I didn't want it to, I didn't want it to fall off. So the track is taped on here, but let's see. We can try pulling this piece of track out. That's a, that's an idea. I'm up for, I'm up for ideas. Now this is definitely when I'm gonna dump everything on the ground because I just have a feeling that's what's gonna happen. Um, so it is this piece of track right here that I'm going to try and pull out. What time is it? 8.51. Uh, if people don't know, in nine minutes, second section is coming on tonight. So I am planning to end around 9 o'clock, maybe 9.05 because they usually start five minutes or so late. See, I guess I, I should not have taped the track down and I just kinked it pretty good. But I was trying to, trying to go quick. So that goes there. Now I gotta try and get these together. Don't do this at home. Take it apart from the end like you're supposed to. All right, so let's go back to two locomotives. And this has nine cars on it right now. So two locomotives, nine cars. We'll put this back up here. And we will put the weights back in. The weights, the uh, one, two, three blocks back under. And we'll go right back up to, whoa, I almost dumped it. We'll go right back up to the 2%. Uh, all right, so there we are, 2%, two locomotives, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cars with a different piece of track. Let's see. Yeah, it, di it did run really smooth up to that point. So uh, turn the wood around and raise the other end. That's actually a good idea too. Uh, no, no. Um, railroads are as flat as they can make them. That is true. That is true. Second section's your new obsession. Yeah, they got some good stuff going on. I, I, like, uh, I like what they're doing. Um, they're definitely, uh, definitely. What, what am I too scared to do? What did I miss? Oh, you sure you want to read the train on there when you do it? No, I'm not sure. And... Well, now it's stopping even sooner. Let's, let's go get a little bit of a run. I don't know if it's gonna matter, but we'll try and, uh, we'll try and give it a little run. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is this is a lot of wheel slip. This is kind of uh, full speed ahead. Um, you know, if the train catches, it'll probably fly off the end.
So um, the reason I'm pretty confident about the grade, uh, everyone keeps asking, is because I know the piece of wood is eight feet long. I know that um, I, I've got the, here, let's see. All right, so the reason I'm pretty confident that this is 2% is because this is sitting up on a one, two, three block down here. It's an eight foot piece of wood. I'm slightly past center where my stack is, and I've got two inches of rise. So two inches of rise over four feet gives you your 2%. So I, I don't need to really check the, um, uh, I, I know it's averaging out to, uh, to around 2% ish. So this is it sitting on the, uh, on the track right now. Yeah, Dwight, it's a little out of control. It's a little out of control, that's true. Um, I can't turn the piece of lumber over because the only piece of lumber that I could find was, uh, this is actually a piece of molding because every other piece of lumber that I could find was all twisted and all, and all like messed up and, and everything. So, so yeah, 6% or six cars at 2%. Um, I got up to eight, so eight cars at 2%. So this is, uh, this is eight at two. Uh, so here's, this is eight cars at 2%. Yeah, I don't like 2% milk. Um, I, I don't like, uh, I don't like it either. 2%, two inches over eight feet is 2%. Two inches over eight feet. Is my math off? So are we saying, because if I put this flat, if I put this flat, it says... Oh, it used to say zero. Oh, well, that's interesting. Let's see what that says now. Well, now it's saying 1%. Hold on. Hold on. Turn it off. Turn it back on again. So it's got a self... So... It should be self, it's still saying 2%. So wait, are we saying, hold on, two inches over four feet. Now I'm gonna have to, now I'm going to, uh, so we think this is not, is this not right? Did I do the math wrong? Well, now I'm curious. So, how do you do the how do you do the incline on the uh, how do you do the incline on the phone? Measure level. All right. So, so the phone says it's two percent, and this thing says it's two percent. Oh, now it's being weird. Hold on. Level. Why is it now saying 0%? See, now, now I'm all kinds of confused. Um, the level seems to be not level anymore. And I don't know how to level the level. Yeah, see, I think it's two over 50 is 4%. Yeah, two inches, two inches over 100 inches. Your building is tilted 2% the wrong way, which throws everything off. It could. All right, so, so I guess what's confusing me then is both of these, both of these are reading at 2%. So 
So why is it saying it's 2% if we think it's not a 2% grade? I have never been on the level, Mike. Never. Eight feet is 96 inches. 0 0.02 is two inches rounded to two. two. Uh, the bench is not level. The bench sinks down in the center, which is why I'm not using the bench as level. That's why I'm using the, I'm using the levels, not the bench as the level. So I don't know. Now, now I'm all. Uh, is that four inches at four feet? Let's. Here we go. So I'm I'm not going to count this bottom one, but just just to kind of it's. So it's two inches. It's two inches here, and there is a slight sag, which is why I have to add the spacers. So it's two inches of. One, two, three blocks, and it is it is fifty six inches from the start. And anywhere I put this, it says two percent, well, slightly under. yeah, this 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 math is uh, is hurting my brain. So it's two inches at four feet, not four inches. Two percent is twenty four inches at twelve. Yeah, two inches divided by fifty six is three and a half. Well, that's interesting. So why, if that's three and a half, is that thing saying it's? Why is it saying it's 2%? Well, that's much better. Oh, geez. So now I'm trying to understand why, why is this wrong? All right, so for shits and giggles, so at this end, at this end to the bottom of the board is four and an eighth. And at this end of the board, we are at one inch. So it's one inch up by four and an eighth. So it's three and an eighth. It's three and an eighth over eight feet. So what is three and an eighth over eight feet? Get a level. Move the middle blocks to the end of your board. One inch and four feet. Magnets, how do they work? I know, I'm, take it to one inch over the 48 mark and you'll be really close to 2%. So one inch over 48, so 48, 48 is right here. And I would actually need to go to two inches because I've got one foot up on the other one. So why isn't the little incline, inclement, inclement thing working? Oh man. Well, that was a waste of an hour. So this says, this now says it's 0 0.7, 0 0.6, but people are telling me that this is a 2%. 3.125 divided by 96 is 3.2%. Well, geez. Well, but it is, it, um, it is level on a, if I put it down here, it's 0.2%, so it's it's just slightly off because the bench work is slightly off. But it matches this. This is what I don't understand, is why does it match this? Like why if I, if I take this to whatever, right, 9%, they both match. Can you see, am I showing the right camera? Yeah. 
So why do these both say 9% if it's wrong? Waste of an hour. How many times have you heard that? All the time. All the time. Who cares about the monitor? Just lower the track until they go up smooth. Yeah. Is it angles or percent? Uh, it says it's percent. Oh, no. It says it's degrees. Sorry. Oh, is that the difference? It's a two degree. It's two degrees, not two percent. Is that two different things? Yeah, it's degrees, not percent. Degrees aren't percent. Oh, geez. Well, there we go. Oh, boy. Well, next week. Join me next week on I Have No Idea What I'm Doing, where I am going to redo this test when I figure out the difference between degrees and percentage. Because I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, and this is the second week in a row that I have proven that. So if there is ever any doubt from anybody that I have no idea what I'm doing, all you got to do is come here on a Tuesday night and I will prove it over and over and over again. But if we've learned anything, if we've learned anything from this hour and six minutes, degrees and percents are not the same. Get over to Sex and Section, enjoy what they're doing. Thanks everybody for supporting the channel from the city that never sleeps. Farewell, model citizens. It's all about humanity.